as you can tell, we have all kinds of air compressors here. Twin tanks, Cobalt, their brand, Porter Cable, DeWalt, Bostitch, by the way, Bostitch does not make the air compressor. Hitachi, by the way, Hitachi doesn't make the air compressor. And then we have more DeWalt air compressors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the cheapest one here. And this is very popular. We're gonna show you whether or not uh, this is something you wanna buy right here. Okay, I'm back at the shop and we're gonna compare these two air compressors. We have a DeWalt twin stack air compressor. And this twin stack air compressor is an oil bath compressor. And this is the Porter Cable one that I just bought a few minutes ago. Uh, this is an oil-free pancake style compressor. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna see what it's all about. All right. Of course, you got your owner's manual. Ah, okay. Doesn't weigh much. What we're going to do is we're going to do something different. I'm not going to just say this is a uh, good air compressor, this is okay. Um, talk about CFM and that sort of thing. We're going to actually take these apart and I'm going to show you what's inside of them. We're not going to just do a tool review, we're going to do the actual tool parts review on these. For the sake of time, I've removed the screws to hold the pump to the compressor tank. And we're going to take this apart, we're going to see what it's all about. By the way, these screws were not easy to get out. Okay, this is what you're looking at inside of one of these air compressors. This little baby pump is uh, what they call a pump. Um, as you can see right here, this particular pump is very small. The motor windings are exposed. So here we have this air compressor and I've taken the head off. As you can see you have valves inside here. Uh, some gaskets, but look at the size of the piston and the cylinder. For one, it's using a Teflon style ring. Um, it's an oil free unit, does not require any oil to run. But that being said, any kind of sand or grit that gets into this air compressor is going to wear this cylinder and this piston ring out. There is nothing to keep that from happening. There really is no um, that I can tell there is no um, air filter assembly on this if it does have an air filter assembly it's certainly not on the head of the unit um, it looks like it just simply draws air in from the side and compresses it so therefore what you're looking at is you're looking at non-filtered air if this is running in a dusty or sandy environment it's going to wear this thing out in a heartbeat this is $99 you get what you pay for. Here's the uh, oil bath air compressor. This does run more. It's about $249, it's not $99. But if you look on the side of this pump, this pump is a Mark 246. You can see that on the side of the unit. Um, this Mark 246 number here, you can read that. These pumps originally were made in Italy by a company called Fini. These are great pumps. Um, they're now made in China, of course, but uh, this is a really good pump, and I'm gonna take the head off and show you what this is all about. First thing you'll notice is it does not have an aluminum transfer tube. It has a copper transfer tube. This uh, transfer tube through the rubber hose and the other one was barely a quarter of an inch. Um, this is more like 3 8 inch copper. You can see you have brass fittings here, uh, nice finned aluminum, cast iron cylinder to be able to dissipate the heat. So we're going to take the head off and show you the valve system and the piston on this one. I'm going to remove the head and remove the screws. By the way, this does have an air filter on it to be able to protect it against any kind of uh, dirt, debris, or whatever, so you're getting filterization. Uh, what you have in this particular air compressor is you have these nice valves. These are Swedish uh, steel. Typically they're stainless valves. 
you have a nice valve plate assembly here um, large valves you have a cast iron cylinder this cast iron cylinder is not going to wear out like that little cheaper one over there uh, nice aluminum head you have a um, dipstick so you can check your oil make sure that that's maintained on a regular basis and it's up to the proper level you got to keep it on a level surface granted but this is going to last a lot longer this has a regular piston and rings in it and I'm going to show you what it looks like so I've taken the valve plate off as you can see this piston is a real piston it's like in any small um, small little engine it has an oil ring on it, it has and two compression rings so this thing's going to last a long time look at the thickness of the cylinder wall it's going to last um, you know it's going to last and you're going to get your money's worth out of this one this is another uh, air compressor here this one if you'll see has a manifold in the front um, it's a dual air compressor it's an oil bath this is something you don't want to get that manifold in the front is nice and handy dandy but it requires special regulators special gauges and if that aluminum manifold behind there cracks and breaks you're up the creek and they'll probably make it obsolete over here if you look at this Porter cable oil free unit we took apart you'll notice it also has a manifold on the front everything has to be just like that you have to get special gauges if you look underneath of it that aluminum manifold if that cracks which is very easy to do it's going to be very hard to replace because they're probably not going to make it available any longer the switch it's inside here as you can see you have to take the entire thing apart to be able to get to the switch over here you'll notice you've got a standalone regulator like I said they're very easy to replace it's very easy to get to this pump and all the parts on it you'll notice in the front it doesn't have that manifold we're going to compare the noise volume here you've got the uh, DeWalt air compressor now we're going to take a look at the oil free porter cable I'm going to turn it off. It's taking forever to pump up. This one says 150 psi. This one over here is 130 psi. Do not buy an air compressor because one says it's going to pump up higher than the other. That is not what you're looking for. You're looking for the rigidity of the pump. You're also looking at the recovery time, the actual CFM. And this one has a larger piston and a larger cylinder so therefore the CFM the cubic feet per minute of air is going to be a lot higher so this one's going to recover a lot faster that doesn't mean that you should not buy this air compressor it's light it'll do the job it'll fill up your tires it's great for a little trim nailer maybe air brushing um, use around the house but it's not going to produce a lot of air you get what you pay for over here this one I've seen these last as long as 15 years and it's not so much the brand because this is a DeWalt but this pump again I said is, is a Feeney pump these Feeney pumps have been tried and true and they've lasted and they're on all kinds of air compressors they're on Hitachi Roll Air Jenny the old M glows and many many other air compressors these Feeney pumps are great so when it comes to buying your next air compressor don't simply look at the price don't look at the air pressure Think of what's covering up the pump. If it's all covered in plastic, buyer beware. If you can act actually see the pump, that's a very good thing. If it has the fins on the top and the side on the cylinder to go ahead and dissipate the heat, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's going to last a long time. So tried and true is oil bath air compressors over oil free. They do make some better oil-free air compressors, but you have to spend more money for them. I hope this has been helpful. See you next time.